Hello Steelers and welcome to another hobby update bench report. This one might be a bit longer than the last couple simply because I've had done so much this week. I managed to actually carve out quite a bit of time for myself and just sit down and, and work my way through my lead pile. <laughs> Although I've managed to make it a little bit bigger as well over the week but we'll get to that. Uh, I've decided what I'm going to try to do is I've got quite a lot of stuff basically sitting in boxes that's been there for a while, it's been building up. And there's a lot of these projects that have kind of stumbled a little bit. So I've just got bits and pieces here that I really want to get finished off. So I'm I'm going to work my way through the lead pile. So there's going to be quite a lot of random stuff. And that's pretty much uh, what I'm going to be showing you here. Quite a bit of weird random stuff. First up is this 3D printed building. This came from uh, Adam Metkinson over at uh, Sweden. He sent it as part of that. You'll remember the big Normandy box uh, that he sent over for me for the buildings, which I've still yet to actually dive into properly. This was one of the smaller ones. I just thought I'm going to do this. Uh, I started it a few weeks ago, actually. It's just been sat around. And I thought I'm going to finish this off. So I just sat down and hammered it out. And it's just a really nice little building. I think Adam had applied... Uh, some textures to it already. Uh, really nice. Uh, it's, I think it's probably one of his older uh, designs but it's certainly a, a lovely little building. Dead easy to paint up and just again another nice addition to, to my terrain stuff. Also uh, you may recall that uh, Richard Hogg sent me a bunch of 3D printed uh, vehicles uh, and I'm still working on some of these. I've still got some kicking around. These ones I paid to the Marmon Herringtons. These are the British armoured cars. These will be used in Singapore. Uh, I did do some earlier ones, but it was at a time when the uh, the, fr the varnish frosted uh, on my uh, on the figures, and it, and it completely ruined them. So there's not much I could do. I tried to strip them, and it just didn't work. Uh, but Richard very kindly sent me uh, another set of them. So these are done. So thanks for that, Richard. Very very uh, very appreciative. Also. The other thing I got as well, uh, a partisan uh, Yorkshire gamer, Ken Riley, gave me a bunch of vehicles that he had no use for, that he'd actually got off Richard Naylor, who is over on Twitter, go and check him out. Uh, he gave me these universal carriers, unfortunately there's no crew for them, uh, but I'll use them as uh, empty ones, you know, replace them with vehicles that have, have had the crew taken out, or knocked out ones, or just use them as scenery or whatever, you know, it's just nice to add. He also gave me this uh, the SDK FZ10s as well, these towing vehicles. Uh, these are quite nice little vehicles and I just had some Plastic Soldier Company uh, crew for these uh, just to, 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 to flesh them out a little bit but these will be used for artillery towers and things like that. It's always good to hold logistics going on. Also these STZ5s, now I misidentified these originally as Rappenschlepper Osts, so that's where they're painted in German yellow. Uh, they should really be green because they're, they're uh, Soviet uh, vehicles. I think, I've got a feeling all of these are probably forged in battle. I'm not 100% sure but because they've got a base that's already on them I think they're forged in battle but I can't be 100% sure. Uh, I can't be bothered to go back and repaint them as green ones. I may do at some point in the future. Right now, I'm just drawing a line under it. They are done. Uh, they are captured. <laughs> STZ5s. Uh, also, as well, I dug around in my boxes and I found this. This uh, Land Vesha Slapper. Schlepper. Uh, this was actually sent to me by Per over at Roller One. It was a fantastic uh, what-if of the uh, Swedish invasion by the Germans uh, and he sent me a couple of these a waterline one and also one on, and I saw I'm going to paint these these will be very useful at some point just for transporting Germans around or to have sitting about in a rear echelon area that's been attacked just something a little bit different and interesting as well also as well on top of all of that uh, I actually painted some of the shell holes that uh, early war I got from early war miniatures. I've uh, got a couple more sheets of these. I'm going to make a video on how to paint these. I just wanted to do these ones to the test because it's been quite a long time since I painted the last one. So I wanted to make sure that I, I still knew how to do it and uh, what colours to use. I will do a, a, a video on these at some point when I paint the next ones. And yes, I know that that reinforced shell crater looks like a massive cock and balls. You don't need to tell me in the comments, but thanks anyway. Uh, if you do point it out. <laughs> and then also as well, uh, I spent Saturday creating some fields, some more fields, because 
I've had a video sitting in the back burner for such a long time about the cornfields. Uh, they're dead easy to make. I made that ages ago, probably in September time, I think. Uh, but I've never got around to making the ploughed field video portion of that. And it's just been sat there staring at me in my to-do list. So I thought, right, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to make these fields. And I've got one, two, three, four, five of them uh, that are, uh, I just need to do, add uh, the finishing touches to them and then they will be done. Uh, nice and easy and that's uh, that's again I'm going to put that video together as well that's the next uh, video that I'm going to be uh, putting together but don't expect it for a couple of months because I've already got my up to March uh, schedule sorted out anyway so uh, it's going to be at least after March time I would have thought but keep an eye out for it, it will be coming uh, and I promised to make it last year I just I've fallen behind with it because I couldn't be bothered to make the ploughed fields because they're a bit more involved I've made them now and they will be done. <laughs> All right, and then over to uh, what I got in the post. Uh, and there's been quite a lot. First up was this one. I've got a huge box here. Let me just pull this out. This massive box turned up last week. And what this was, it's not that, that's smoke. That's from the uh, pub game. This is 30... Uh, Purpose-built trees. These are all from Joe Bilton, uh, Joe, War, Joe underscore Wargamer over on Twitter. Go and check him out. Make some amazing scenery. But I did a commission uh, because I got a bit of money uh, for redundancy. So I thought I'll go and spend this on some updating my trees. I've had the, the trees I've got. I'm going to keep using them, but I've had them for years and years and years. Old railway modeler trees. And I just wanted something a little bit more bespoke, a little bit more specialist. And Joe has, has come up trumps with these. Uh, and as I said, there's about 30 or so in there. Huge amount of them. Uh, I set them out in my dining room too, but earlier... And that should be uh, you should be able to see that on the screen at some point. But they're lovely, really nice, uh, and I'm well chuffed with them. Uh, there you will you will see these in future videos because I'm going to start using them as soon as I can. But if you're watching, Joe, thank you very much, huge thank you for that. And uh, they look brilliant, so I'm well chuffed with them. I just now need to get some more storage. <laughs> uh, but also <laughs> as well, it's been a, it's been a bit crazy for the uh, for the post this week. Um, I got. I realised that I needed a few extra Soviets for my chain of command um, uh, sections of uh, platoons. Uh, after we played at the club uh, the other week, we started the Kursk scenario, as you remember, the week before last. Uh, so I just got a couple of sets of uh, Soviets from Peter Pig. And I thought, well, since I'm getting those, I may as well get some German engineers as well. So these are flamethrowers and mine clearance and stuff like that. I just chucked in an extra set just to get, you know, build, build it up. So I'm not paying too much for postage percentage wise. Uh, and I just thought I'll get those, just add them together. They're going to be dead easy to put together. Uh, I just haven't done it yet, but I might do that this week. That might be this week's goal. I also as well got another set of the Flames of War rifle platoon for the Romanians. Uh, this box is, box is empty because I put them all together because I just didn't have enough for a full chain of command platoon. And my older figures are kind of painted in about three different styles so I, I want to do them just as one basic platoon and any leftovers I will turn into uh, all group stands and then I can chuck those in together with the other Romanians as well. Uh, but uh, I can't remember where I go with these. It wasn't Goblin Gaming, so it was another uh, on, online and they, they were delivered very quickly. So it's good to see that Battlefronts are producing the Romanians again. So if you do need them, go out and get them. Speaking of Flames of War, I kind of went against... <laughs> Uh, my uh, my usual uh, and I actually bought The Great War by Flames of War I just got this from some, uh, some seller on eBay I, I, I've been curious about it to be honest I've never played Flames of War I've got a fair idea of how it plays uh, but I just kind of wanted to do it I was thinking about doing it as a review however I've read the basic rules and the basic rules are pretty simple I mean this is tank warfare in the First World War and anybody who knows anything about the First World War knows that tanks are not the uh, the main part of the First World War at all. Uh, it's kind of like trying to shoehorn something in that just isn't there. I know it's kind of you know it's a game and it's and it's all about uh, it's all about what the players want to do and stuff. But also just reading the rules themselves. I mean, my God, 
how pedestrian can they get? Um, from my point of view, it is just move, shoot, combat, morale. And I mean, can we just not move on from that at this point? It might work for you. It probably does, but not for me. Absolutely not for me these days. Um, as I say, I might do a review on these. I might not, <laughs> just because I don't know if I if I you know, if if there's enough people who want to want to see what the review is. Because obviously, I've just been interested in the first World War War gaming for a little while. So, uh, well, for a long time anyway. But I just wanted to kind of but kind of round it out really and just show show you what what there is and what what that what is out there. But also speaking of uh, First World War, uh, I got from Peter Hart, the uh, one of the authors, uh, "Laugh or Cry," uh, which is subtitled "The British Soldier on the Western Front, 14 to 18." This only got came here yesterday. It says uh, fresh approach to researching modern day uh, life in trench warfare. Extensive archive research. Uh, for first-hand quotes and accounts from the Western Front and demonstrates how soldiers adapted to their surroundings and used humour as a coping mechanism. Now, if you've been listening to Pete and Gary's uh, military history on their podcast, they've already been doing snippets from this anyway. A lot of the stuff I'm familiar with, uh, to be fair, like the, a lot of the themes of the book, uh, whether it's breaking any new ground from a historical point of view, I'm not entirely sure, but it will have a lot of uh, information about uh, individual st soldiers' stories and things like that as well, which, you know, is all completely new, and that will all be from the Sound Archives and the Imperial War Museum as much as anything else. Now, I got this from Peter himself. He's currently selling them. just have to get in touch with him on Facebook or even over on uh, Twitter. Uh, and he, uh, they both signed it for me, so that's lovely. Thank you, chaps, if you are watching. But again... Uh, I'm going to dive into that and I, I probably will do a review of that at some point uh, because this is the kind of book that is a really good, will be a really good entry point for somebody who uh, has a an old school image of the First World War. So I think this, you know, I'm going to say here and now, even without having read it, because I know Peter's books anyway and where his stance on history is, this will be a real eye opener for people. Uh, and I, I would suggest probably just going buying it. There you go, there's a quick review. Go and buy it. It's not going to be rubbish. <laughs> it's a short answer. Uh, also, in the post as well, I got um, the new uh, Wargame Soldiers and Strategy magazine. Uh, this is issue one, two, three. Uh, I've, I've not even had a chance to open this yet, so I've got no idea what is in it. But always look forward to this and always look forward to getting to see what's in there. So we've got uh, features Raven Feast uh, of Mistlestoe, Mistle, Mistletoe and Oak. Bing Force, we drive at dawn and take a scalpel to your scenario. Uh, not entirely sure what else is in there. I don't know what. Uh, the Rise of the Redcoat is the theme for this year. So we've got the evolution of British infantry, uh, defeating a royalist forces in the Midlands with Charles the Last Roll of the Dice. Velcom in Landeveren, the Battle of Walcourt, 25th August 1689. Mar uh, market Day at Bad Wimfren, a Marlborian skirmish scenario set in Germany. Rise of the Redcoat, Britain's first standing armies. So why aren't they all in Redcoats? Redcoats in Restoration Britain. So uh, a lot of stuff about Malbrarian and probably 18th, 19th century stuff as well. Actually, an interesting read. I'm looking forward to diving into that. And uh, my pal Martin also sent over this book, uh, uh, Trial by Battle. Uh, again, not even had a chance to really look at this, but I'll just tell you exactly what it's about. I, you could probably... Uh, you'll, you'll, I think as soon as I read the back of it, you'll probably understand why he sent it to me and what my interest in this will be. October 1941, 21-year-old Alan Mart is posted to India and taken under the window of the dogmatic, overbearing acting captain Sam Hall. Following the Japanese advance of Singapore, the men are deployed to Malaya. Now, what interest in Malaya do I have? What follows is a quietly shattering and searingly authentic depiction of the claustrophobia of jungle warfare and the indiscriminate nature of conflict. Based on David Piper's own wartime experience in Southeast Asia, this new edition of a 1959 classic includes a contextual introduction from IWM, which sheds new light on the dramatic true events that so influenced its author. So this is one of the uh, Imperial War Museum's new publications, uh, I, I I have one that I got the uh, what was it called the patrol I can't remember the nice guy's name who wrote it that was really good well worth reading these are uh, basically 
fictionalized memoirs of men who were actually there so this is going to be you know an interesting book something to dive into and again i'm looking really looking forward to getting into that right so that's the stuff that i've done and the, <laughs> that came through the post i told you it's going to be a long one this one uh, this week at the club, uh, we played a game of O Group. Uh, it was uh, it was Lee versus Paul and Gary, uh, fresh from his YouTube uh, his, his YouTube fame over on Little Wars TV. Uh, their new one of their new videos, Gary appears in it. Uh, they just basically did a. Uh, I, I threw down a Soviet versus German attack. Uh, on uh, so it's a Soviet attack on, on German positions, just a, a, a village attack in 1944, a part of Operation Bag Ration. It was an absolute steamroller for Lee. He really just rolled straight over the uh, over the Germans, largely because the I've never seen it before, but the Germans rolled three straight hesitant units in a turn, and they just it was literally at the apex of the attack, and they just couldn't do anything. Uh, by the time they were able to deploy onto the table, the Russians were already in the village and, you know, literally on top of them. It was it was a massacre by the end of it. But I think everybody enjoyed themselves. That's what I think, at least, even if uh, the uh, the poor Germans got their asses handed to them. I'm actually going to refight the game because I thought the Germans were so badly dealt a bad card of hands in, in that game. I'm going to refight the game uh, this weekend. I'm going to set up the table for that and uh, just to uh, make that into a video, a solo video of that. So do expect that. I was going to do, because uh, I put a poll on the, the channel and uh, between Through the Mud and Blood and Ugroup and Ugroup came out on top. Only just though, it was about 50, 58 to 42% I think. So it was a pretty close call, but uh, uh, people want to see O Group, so I'm going to make an O Group video, uh, and that will be out again probably in a couple of months, uh, given current schedules. But keep an eye out for it, and I'm just going to refight from what I remember how I set the table up to uh, as close as I can to that that game and uh, uh, and use the same forces just to make it easier on myself. Also, as well, this week I played a solo version of the Undaunted Stalingrad. I started the campaign. Because Dean and I started a long time ago, but we just haven't had a chance to get back to it. And I wanted to uh, I wanted to play it because I've had it for such a long time now. I just want to at least work my way through a few. So what I'm, I've done is I've recorded that. Uh, that's edited. That's probably, I'm going to sneak it out probably next week sometime. Maybe the week after. We'll see. Uh, I've got a couple of other videos planned as well. Uh, but that's going to be a, 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 an occasional series as I work my way through the Stalingrad campaign solo uh, what I did was I basically reset what Dean and I had done and I just wrote down our casualties and who'd been replaced and things so I was able just to, to reset the entire thing and put it all together uh, also as well this week or last week as well I was on the modeling for advantage live stream that was last Tuesday really really uh, really good fun thanks for having me on chaps it was uh, it was great uh, I spent about an hour and 20 minutes or so just talking about first world war tactics and the development of British tactics in particular through the war uh, I really enjoyed it uh, it seems from the comments on from the chat that a lot of people really enjoyed it as well uh, so Thanks for everybody who did tune in uh, and go and check it out. Again, I'll put a description, a link for that in the description down below. So go and check it out. Uh, I'd like to get back again and uh, chat with them again because it was just real fun. Uh, and even just having a chat about anything else doesn't have to be First World War. Happy to go and chat with those guys. Always good to collaborate with other other YouTubers out there. And I, uh, I say, thoroughly enjoyed it. So once again, thank you very much, chaps. And another shout out once again for the Through the Mud and the Blood Facebook group. Uh, go and just search Through the Mud and the Blood and then brackets Two Fat Lardies. You'll find it. It's on Facebook. It's a private group. Uh, I need to give you access to it. But uh, as soon as I see that you want access to it, you can get in. And uh, there's quite a lot of stuff being posted in there about Through the Mud and the Blood people painting figures and uh, some lovely terrain and things like that in there as well so go and check that out and do post some stuff in there when you're playing games of it all right as i said a pretty long one this time compared to what it was before but i'll leave it at that uh, i've got my plans for the week for what i want to do it's probably going to be a lot of infantry i'm just waiting for some bases from war bases to turn up but apart from that 
It's going to be uh, working away through Romanians and Soviets, I think. And I shall say thank you very much for watching. If you want to help the channel out, you can check out my Patreon, where you will get uh, videos ad-free and early, uh, the main videos of the week, and also other bits and pieces as well, and also channel memberships as well. They help out as well. It all helps to keep the lights on here at Steel Towers and keep producing content for you of a wargaming type. All right, I shall wrap up there. And thank you very much again for watching.